Um, thank you everybody for coming this morning uh, or this afternoon or whatever time it is, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Anne Schultes and I am the marketing manager at uh, IIED, the International Institute for Environment and Development. And I'm really happy to have you here at this session to talk about uh, building your profile on Twitter and uh, all the fun and engagement you can have around that. So uh, I'll get started with my presentation if that's okay. We've just got the normal housekeeping things to start with. Uh, this uh, session is being recorded and we've taken some precautions to prevent uh, people from getting in who shouldn't be here. So if there's anything funny happening in the chat, do let me or my co-host David from IID know and we'll uh, hopefully sort it out. Uh, uh, this is how you use Zoom. I haven't uh, put all the little pop-ups here, but you can see all of the elements to use Zoom at the bottom. I hope today we'll use reactions. I'm a big fan of emojis and GIFs and that sort of thing. So if you wanna give me a thumbs up or a clap or at any point, that would be great. Um, I would really encourage everyone to update their name in, uh, in the Zoom so that we can see who you are and where you're from. You can do that using the uh, participants uh, icon and then just finding more next to your own name in the participants list. And then if you have any issues, uh, like I said, we are uh, recording. And if you have any issues, contact David Sankar, who is the uh, digital guru from IIED. So this is uh, using Twitter effectively. Uh, and I, like I said, I'm the, the marketing manager at IIED. So I manage IIED's Twitter account, IIED's other social media as well, so, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. Uh, and so I'll be talking a little bit about those things in this session, but mostly about Twitter. Um, and actually, I'm going to quickly stop screen sharing for a moment because I want to do an icebreaker with all of you. I hope that's okay. We don't have a lot of people in the room, so hopefully we can all join in. Uh, now, if you tweet for your organization, can you uh, turn on your screen and just raise your hand? Tweet for your organization or for yourself. Priyanka tweets. Does anybody else? Nobody seems one, like they want to put on their screen. That's fine. Uh, if you can want to do a thumbs up, you could also do one of the reactions. So if you give me a thumbs up to let me know that you tweet for your organization. Nobody, okay. Well, the next question in the icebreaker was what works for you? So on Twitter, oh, I see Teresa and Risha also both tweet, that's great. So what works for you? What do you think is a good way to speak to people on social media? What uh, sort of things do you like to see? And that links to the third question, what makes you laugh on Twitter? So things that work for me are hashtags. Obviously we've been using the CBA 15 hashtag a lot this week. Uh, pictures, GIFs, I like a funny cat video. Uh, I like, anything that will uh, make me laugh. So, you know, puppies and small animals. Does anyone else have any, anything that they think works for them or makes them laugh on Twitter? Just shout it out or put it in the chat if you're feeling shy. Svetlana says, I do Twitter and other social media sites, analytics for my organization. That's great. Human-centric stories of rural India. Great, yeah, human-centric stories are really important, I think, for the work that we all do. And, and particularly on Twitter, it's, it's a great way to, to raise the profile of things. 
Lisa has their hand up. Please uh, correct me on name pronunciation. Yeah, hi, uh, hi, Annie. Uh, good to connect with you. I just wanted to know, like, you know, I'm currently working with Watershed Organization, uh, and they are into, you know, rainwater harvesting and climate change and all. But uh, we we do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, human centric stories and, you know, or uh, talking about, uh, you know, environment and restoring, uh, you know, ecosystem based restoration and all. We do a lot of activities, but whenever we like put on the human centric stories, you know, even if it's a very impactful story, I don't know how do we like reach out to more people and how effectively we can use it on Twitter. It just like gets like hardly like 10, 15 likes, that's all. And uh, we encourage our, you know, own employees also to retweet and comment. But uh, I don't think that's helping much. But I don't know. That's the only reason I wanted to know how, you know, we can use Twitter effectively. I understand we have to boost the posts and everything. But having said that, I just wanted to know what works and what does not work. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe if I get into my presentation, hopefully that will give yeah. you some ideas. Is that okay? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, All right. definitely. Thanks. Great. Okay. So I will go back to screen sharing now and we can look at the presentation. Again, so moving on to, he doesn't want to move on. There we go. So, yeah. So which social network works for you? So this is one of the things that it is worth thinking about if you're putting together a communication strategy or a social media strategy, it's good to get the social networks that fit with your organization and all of these things like your goals, the time you can't have to spend on it and the resources, uh, the knowledge that you have. Obviously, uh, using social media does take a bit of practice and it does take time and also knowing your audience. So, so this is where if you have particular you know, stories or publications or blogs or whatever, you know, are, you, are they being shared in the right space for the right people? And you don't have to be on all social media, but just the ones that matter to you and your audience. So why is Twitter and social media more generally important? So it, it can increase your profile and your brand, both personal and organizational. Um, it can drive traffic to your content and to your website. And you can use it to engage with people. It's cost effective. You know, Twitter is free. You just have to sign up and create an account. It allows you to build and interact with a community who, who wants to hear more about what you're doing. And it lets you monitor key trends so you can see that you're talking about the right things. And on Twitter alone, there's uh, 350 million odd users. So that's quite a lot of potential to reach a lot of people. Um, and this is just a, a few stats uh, from uh, Hootsuite, who every year put together this uh, We Are Social report, which talks about social media and digital use around the world. And so there's 7.3, uh, 7.83 billion people in the world, half of which, or like more than half actually, two thirds are using mobile phones and almost half are using social media, uh, sorry, the internet and almost half are using social media. So that is, again, that's a really big argument for being on the internet, being on social media and getting your kind of uh, your information out there. So this is similar to the slide I showed before, which is about generally about social media, but it's, it's worth, you know, kind of thinking, what do you want to achieve with your Twitter account? What community of practice are you targeting? So that's not just, what you're putting out, like what you're tweeting out. That's also how you, how are you presenting yourself and your profile and what kind of persona do you want to communicate? So thinking about what you want to achieve, do you want to share your work? Do you want to find others work and build your profile? Uh, you can, do you want to participate in conversations or connect with people? These are all things that are possible on Twitter. Uh, I've just got a couple of uh, celebrity Twitter profiles here. So Christiana Figueres has 125,000 followers. So you could, you could try and engage with her if you wanted to, you could tweet at her. The, LD, the LDC chair has, uh, ha, is on Twitter as well. So, and is quite active. So that's a really good person to try to engage with if you want. And then the Pope, there's 
You can find pretty much anyone on Twitter. And what kind of community of practice are you targeting? So this is thinking about who, who are you? What is your sort of profile? And what sort of conversation do you particularly want to cultivate, I suppose? So this is uh, Sarah. Uh, her description says she's an environmental economist. She works on climate change, cities, and sustainable development. And this is where I want to, to tell you that in your profile, you can be a bit tongue in cheek if you want. You can be serious if you want to be totally serious. Uh, but you just need to kind of get across what it is that you are going to be saying through your profile. So this is Catelyn. She loves economics, cities, and burgers. But she's a research analyst. So this is you know, a way to kind of say that you have interests outside of work. And then finally, this is me. I don't have a picture of myself. I have an avatar. And I've said that I like our beautiful planet, my kid, cycling and feminism. I'm a trustee at an organization and my pronouns are she and her. So these are all just different ways of getting across the sort of things that you'll be talking about from your Twitter profile. And obviously these are all personal profiles, but it's the same with an institutional profile. You, you, you need to make it clear what you are going to be talking about. And it doesn't have to all be serious, but yeah. And so who are you online? If you're going to be engaging in conversations with people, are you going to be, you know, kind and easy to understand and giving? Are you going to be uh, argumentative and aggressive? There's a lot of, obviously there's a lot of chances on Twitter to be both of those ways, but I, I personally go for, you know, making uh, conversations that are productive. So here's some top tips for, for better tweeting. And this might be where you can get some ideas on uh, how you can make sure that your stories are presented in the best way, I suppose. So if you're tweeting about things that you think are interesting, don't just tweet a headline. Make sure you're adding to the conversation. So what was an interesting fact you took out of it or a, or, or a sound bite? Does it answer any big questions for you or does it relate to your work? Make sure that your Twitter account has a variety of things and uh, to look back on to be a resource to others. So that links back to sort of what you've got in your profile. So in my profile, I've said, I like our earth and my child and cycling. And, and you'll see from my historical tweets that I tweet a lot about climate change and a bit about politics. But I also, you know, sometimes tweet, you know, funny anecdotes about my child. So these are just different ways to, to keep it engaging, but also to, to make people kind of see where you're coming from. So here we've got an example of what not to do. So this is a headline from an, a Guardian article, London, one of the worst capitals in Europe for clean, safe transport. So what we've got here is some tweets from this report and they all look the same. So this is what we're talking about when we say, make it interesting, take the anecdotes that are interesting, put your personal spin on it. None of these are interesting. None of these are gonna get people's attention. But here, a couple people have put their own personal uh, opinions in it. So this person at the top says, London sucks on cycling and pedestrian safety. And they've put a bit of context, they've got a little emoji, and then they link to the article. And then this one, London, one of the worst capitals in Europe for clean air. And then they show that actually that information came from Greenpeace. So they've tagged Greenpeace in the tweet. And then they've related it to something that they heard on the radio that day. So this, you know, giving, it, giving things a bit more context uh, makes it that much more relevant to people. And it, it draws these people's attention to it more uh, easily. So tweet to other people. 
when you participate in conversations through your replies and your mentions and your hashtags. Uh, you can also ask questions or conduct polls if you want to, to be really engaging. So replies where is, is when somebody uh, starts a tweet with their username and then you, uh, and you respond to them. And a mention is if you've tweeted something and you've stuck their name in it. And then hashtags, obviously this whole week at CBA, we've been using CBA 15, and that's gonna be a really good resource for anybody who wants to see what has been discussed at the conference. I've been using it every single day in the tweets from my ID, and I've been looking at the hashtag to, to see what sort of things to put in in the daily newsletters that I've been sending. So it's because it really helps uh, consolidate all of the, the things that have been said. Here's some really good examples of mixing up uh, mentions and hashtags in some tweets. So here, this uh, this person's talking about World Oceans Day, and they've got a couple other hashtags in there. Uh, hashtags are, like I said, are really great for for drawing people into the conversation. Here we can see these two tweets are from ABEF 2018. So that's presumably that was a conference. So this person was commenting on something, and they've tagged IID in it because one of our uh, researchers was at this event. And in this one, they've had a whole conversation from this, uh, from this event. So she tagged this woman in it, and then she replied, and then they carried on the conversation. And it was obviously, you can see it was productive because, you know, Roz was, Roz was perhaps being a bit critical, saying this could have been a great event, but there was no women speaking on blue economy. So what's going on there? And then this woman, responded and, and they had a good productive conversation. So that is, that's a really good way to get people uh, talking. Oh, uh, I see somebody has raised their hand. Shall I, shall I pause there? And uh, Priyanka, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, I just want to ask about um, when you, like conversations on Twitter as an organization, I know it happens quite fast paced. How do you, um, make sure that you're communicating in the right um, tone that the organization wants do you do you like ask someone else like and get uh, i don't know if i'm making sense here like because it's not just you, you you're communicating as your organization but you also don't want to have to go through a long line of people so yeah. do you personally just tweet what you think or how do you do it quickly but also communicate in like a uniform way? Um, it depends on the organization, I think, and it depends on the context. So in a previous uh, job, I worked at a, a campaign where we got a lot of people, you know, commenting at us on Twitter all the time. And so that meant that there was three or four of us uh, who were campaigners who, who all had access to Twitter and, and we, would, we could all respond. At IID, we don't have a lot of people asking lots of questions, but uh, if, if there are tricky ones, which happen occasionally, quite often I will send those questions to the relevant researcher because most often they are research based. And so if, uh, and quite a lot of our researchers are on Twitter as well. So rather than trying to answer it, if it's something that I don't know the answer to, I will, uh, I will email one of my colleagues and say, this is your area of expertise. Can you respond? And then they can carry on the conversation. And quite often, it's more uh, productive for them to have the conversation anyway, if it's their area of research, than it is just for IIED as a kind of institutional account. I think the other thing to think about is you will kind of having managed a, a social media account for a while, I think you will begin to know the sort of voice that your account has. I mean, obviously IAD is a research institute, so we are mainly quite serious in our tweeting. During CBA, it's been a bit more kind of relaxed. Uh, and we also have sessions on every other Friday. I do pubs Friday where I tweet our new publications and that's quite casual as well. But I think you will understand and you will kind of know the voice that your institution presents. Um, yeah, I think does, does that sound does that make sense? 
Okay. Oh, wait, I'm on mute. Yes, sorry. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So uh, next, so we'll move on. Um, uh, a way to, to really get people seeing your tweets is to be visual. So to use photos and graphs and animations and GIFs and videos. And here you can see I used a few emojis, but unfortunately they didn't come out in color. So they're not as uh, nice looking as I would have hoped. But visual elements are a really great way to increase your uh, reach uh, on Twitter. Um, at IID, we practically never do a tweet that just has text in it. Um, I always try to have a photo or a card or a GIF or something because that increases the, the amount of people that see it and it just makes it look more interesting. Uh, here's an example. Here's a couple examples of how to do that. So this uh, using images and emojis and mentions and hashtags, uh, but not too many. So here you can see we've tweeted a link to one of our colleagues, uh, Sam, and this is the so this is how YouTube uh, previews in a tweet. So we would usually, if we're doing a link to a YouTube video, I wouldn't probably put a picture just because if you're viewing that, it will automatically play on screen. And here we've got two hashtags and then his Twitter handle there. And then this other aquaculture account has tweeted a, a little infographic and they've got a few hashtags and a link as well. Um, I wouldn't usually use more than probably four of these different elements per tweet. So if you've just got a long string of hashtags that can be quite difficult to read. It's also not that great for accessibility for people who have uh, visual impairment. Um, so, you know, using hashtags, but but sparingly and making sure that they're the right ones. So fisheries, aquaculture, seafood, that's really straightforward. Uh, and that's really clear that those are the, the areas that this person is, is tweeting about. Be generous. So share things that are related to what you're interested in and be positive about it. So here, this you can see that this person has tweeted a link to uh, a list of women researchers, and then Sarah's responded saying, "This is great, congratulations." And then Chris over here has says, "This is one of the best articles I've read on why climate change is a social justice issue," and so and then he thanks the authors from it, and then links to the the uh, the article. So that is a really like really nice way to not just share an article or a list of researchers, but to be really positive and to build the engagement around the, the, those people that are mentioned uh, and to, uh, to draw attention to your tweet as well because it has a few different elements in it. So tweet early and often. So that means when your audience is around, for example, if they're commuting, um, when your followers might have breaks and use the data to, to, so you know when they're around. So um, at IID, we have new content that goes on our website pretty much every day. And so I put that on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook first thing in the morning. Uh, so that catches people who, well, you know, it may have been uh, commuting, perhaps aren't commuting now. Uh, but then we also do some tweets usually around lunchtime. And we know from our kind of m and &E that we've done around it that later in the afternoon, so sort of between two and four is a good time for our audience as well. So we, we try to make sure to get things out there at that time. And we, we uh, uh, keep checking, you know, to see that it is still that way. And then to tweet regularly. So Twitter uh, uses an algorithm that um, promotes people who post a lot. So, uh, and here I've said, but not too regularly and bury the message, people will get bored of you. So this, uh, this also links back to, to what I was saying before about if you're sharing an article. So, you know, if we have new content that we put on Twitter every day, so say I'm sharing a blog, first thing in the morning, I will probably tweet the, the link and the title and the small amount of blurb to that blog. Uh, if I'm tweeting that same blog again later in the day, I will probably lift a quote from it instead. Uh, you know, take 
some figures or stats from it, if there's anything like that. So obviously still wanting to draw people's attention to that same content, but changing the way that we're writing it so that it stays interesting and stays fresh. And Twitter doesn't like it if you tweet the exact same thing more than once. So we also on Sundays do something we, uh, where we tweet our kind of coverage from the week with using uh, in case you missed it. And so that means any of those tweets that I do that time have to be different, even just slightly from ones earlier in the week. So maybe using a slightly different hashtag, uh, just rewording things, but just to make it a little bit more, uh, to make it uh, attractive to Twitter to put out there. And then here I've also said use TweetDeck schedule the week. Uh, I use TweetDeck a lot. Uh, in fact, I'm on it pretty much all the time. And here you can see what this looks like. So this is IAD's TweetDeck. This is a free uh, app. It is part of Twitter. So if you have a Twitter account, you also do have a TweetDeck account. So here you can see I've got it set up. So this far left column is our feed. So that's the things that IAD is tweeting. So here you can see that I've re there's been a couple of retweets recently, and then here is a tweet for a blog. Uh, this tweet, this column here is the uh, uh, our notifications. So this is our mentions and our likes and our retweets. People who have retweeted us. Um, so here you can see WRI has uh, mentioned us in this tweet. So that's why that showed up there. This column uh, is where we follow all of IID's uh, colleagues. So anybody that works in the Institute and has a Twitter account, uh, we follow them. So I say we, I mean that, which is me and Matt, who's my other colleague who does social media. So we um, use this then as a way to amplify the voices of our colleagues. So if you know people are tweeting about their own research, that's a way for IID to, to see that it's been put out there. Uh, and then they can share it on. And this column here, what we're doing here is following the iid.org URL. So in this column, I can see anytime somebody tweets something from the IID website. So it's really good. To, that's a really good way to, to separate uh, what you're following and uh, keep track of different things. If this were, uh, if I had a bigger screen, I could show you that I'm also following the CBA 15 hashtag, following the London Climate Action Week hashtag, following uh, individuals like Andrew Norton, our director, and Salim to, to see if we want to retweet them. So there's lots of, it can be really um, helpful in it, you seeing who's talking about your work, but then also you being able to amplify uh, other people who you think are interesting. Uh, one other way to, to really raise your profile on Twitter is to hold a Twitter chat. And uh, this is something that we did last week uh, for CBA. Uh, so this isn't something I'm gonna be talking about a lot, but one, so I've, I made this Twitter card using a program called Canva, which is also a free program on the internet, which allows you to do a lot of uh, quite simple design things uh, so for that uh, Twitter chat, uh, I made a series of cards which have the CBA15 hashtag on them. And then these were questions that were related to the five themes of CBA. And so throughout the day last week uh, on the 9th of June, I tweeted out these cards and asked some questions and people responded. Uh, people started talking about their projects uh, people were engaging with each other, um, and all the time they're using the CBA15 hashtag, which is drawing attention to that and getting people uh, excited about the conference. So that was that's a really good way to to build your profile as an organization if that's something you want to do. But it's also a good way to, like I said, with this hashtag CBA15, it's a good way again to to consolidate some of the conversations that are happening. Um, and finally, this is, this is my last couple of slides now. Uh, it's really important to measure uh, how you're doing. So Twitter has its own analytics. Uh, and there's also other apps that you can use called tweet, like TweetReach. There's lots of different ones available on the internet. Some are free. 
most are not free, unfortunately, but Twitter's analytics itself are quite good. Um, also, if on your website uh, or your blog, if you are promoting those blogs on social media and you are using Google Analytics on your blog, you can then use Google Analytics to measure where your traffic is coming from. And it will have a little thing that says social. So you know that you've got some percentage of your web traffic coming from uh, social media. Um, so this is just an example of Twitter analytics now. So here, this is uh, our tweets for the last week. So here you can see this is Wednesday, June 9th. This spike here, that is when we had our CBA 15 Twitter chat. And that is when IID you know, tweeted out those five cards with those questions. Uh, and we participated in the conversation and we retweeted a lot of the responses. So it really caused a spike in the impressions that we got for our tweets that day. And this is it again, you can see here in the, um, the, the week view. So Twitter analytics is pretty good. Uh, it gives you information about the, your top tweets. Um, you can change the, the settings to the view how how long you want to, to measure it by. You can export the data. So if you are uh, wanting to report on any of this, um, you can get a Excel spreadsheet which has information in it. Um, and that's, yeah, and I think that's about it. So this is my presentation. This is a little avatar I made on Facebook. Um, it's a bit pixelated because Facebook is optimized for mobile. So it was quite hard to size it up. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's my whole presentation. I guess we can uh, go to questions now. That's okay. Um, if anybody wants to raise their hand and ask out loud, or if you want to post some questions in the chat, um, I'm quite happy to answer questions, Saqib. Uh, we'll take Saqib and then Priyanka, please. Hi, and thank you so much. So I, I just had more of a sort of institutional comms kind of a question is that I'm, I'm sure as IID also probably faces that we have multiple programs that are coming out with things that need to be tweeted. So maybe a report on one and a webinar on another one. How do you make sure that your tweets get each get a bit of prominence and they're not sort of eating, you know, the other one on your news feed getting sort of pushed down below, but still getting, you know, a little bit of promotion or get going around all the all the networks that you need it to? Well, I guess that's a, a, a good way to use hashtags. Um, so throughout CBA, we've been doing things that are also unrelated to, to CBA. So we have you know, some blogs on urban issues that have come out. We have papers that we still want to promote. Um, so those are the things that I then prioritize at the times throughout the day that I would ordinarily put things on. So. If I've gotten, so this week, the urban blog that went up, that still went up at 8.30 in the morning, and I put it across our Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, and we haven't talked about LinkedIn here, but uh, we do find LinkedIn is a really good audience for us. Um, and LinkedIn also uses hashtags in the same way that um, Twitter does, uh, so it kind of gathers the information quite well. Um, and we've had a quite a like, increase in followers on LinkedIn. So I, I mean, I think if you if you haven't tried it, that might be another um, another social media to look into. Uh, I guess one of the other things uh, in terms of like measuring is it's worth looking at what is the best uh, social media for your country. So that we are social slide that I showed at the start, which had the stats about global internet use and global social media use. They do a full breakdown report of on a country by country basis. And so from that, you can see, uh, you know, is Bangladesh better for Twitter or is it better for uh, Facebook or Instagram? You know, so it's like, so it's worth looking to see what is the kind of uh, most used social media where you are as well. Um, Priyanka? Hi, um, I just had a question about the, you spoke about this Twitter chat and you had a bunch of different social media cards with questions. I want us to know, do you time when you send them all out or do you send them all out in one go? Does Twitter have any 
a version to that, like sending a bunch of tweets out all in one go. Um, I just want to hear your perspective on that. Now that, of course, uh, it's a good question. Um, so for that chat, we did it over several hours. Um, one thing that I didn't actually, I forgot to mention in that screen part of um, uh, tweet deck is that you can schedule tweets. That's, that's like a really like important thing is like you don't have to be tweeting at the moment that you want to tweet. You can schedule it ahead of time. And so for those, for that Twitter chat, I scheduled them once an hour between eight and 12 uh, in the morning. So eight in the morning and 12 in the afternoon. So whereas in the past we've done other Twitter chats where we've done all five, we've done usually five questions again and just compressed them all into one hour. Um, and we just wanted to try something new. I think that's the, the really good thing about, uh, about social media is that you can experiment as well to see what works for you. I think for us doing the four hours chat rather than a one hour chat was more successful because it meant that people could like had a bit more time to like read back other people's interactions and 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 engage a bit more whereas like when it's in an hour you want, you want to get everything out there and so you need to be really well planned as well. I think that's the other thing about Twitter chats that uh, is worth thinking about is that you if you're asking questions it's good to have answers in mind as well. So if you, if you can see that like maybe not many people are engaging, you want to have some kind of things to spur the conversation along as well. Um, we've also done whole days uh, around particular hashtags where we, have obviously there are international days that do that as well. So we've got World Refugee Day coming up this weekend and we're gonna be doing a Twitter thread for that, but that's a global thing. Uh, and sometimes we'll kind of uh, jump onto those sort of events as well, where, uh, you know, if there's a, a wider conversation happening, that might be an opportunity as well. Uh, Jagannatha? Thank you, uh, Anne. This is uh, uh, Jagannatha from uh, India. Uh, I'm uh, uh, not so much uh, illiterate, but uh, nevertheless, I have used uh, Twitter a couple of times and I have an account. And it's very fascinating that you showed us uh, in your presentation how IAED is effectively using it. I'm very happy about it. Uh, as you know, technology has got two edges. Uh, well, science is self-correcting, technology doesn't have an internal control. So my question is, uh, who controls the enormous uh, uh, data uh, which uh, flows in the Twitter, uh, for example, uh, uh, you see, there should be some IPR regulations, you know, intellectual property regulations, uh, which will uh, uh, have some sort of copyrights and, you know, there could be some indigenous knowledge link. And I'm, I'm, I'm referring to larger issues, uh, but I'm not so, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, comfortable with Twitter in a sense. In yeah. our part of the world, uh, it is used more for, uh, uh, you know, polit politicking uh, rather than uh, politics. Uh, you know, a, a leader flashes a message, criticizing, or uh, there will be an intention to make followers, you know, to mm -hmm. have a good number of followers, a so-and-so cine actor or a politician has got this many million followers. Uh, yes, not, yeah. that, that, that hardly matters for community empowerment, you know. It neither yeah. enables the community or... Uh, uh, makes any subtle uh, move for a, a lifestyle change. You see, uh, I'm sorry for taking more time. Uh, no, that's okay. Issues, I mean, it's, it's a, you raise a really good. Sorry. Pardon? I was gonna. You raise a really good point about who controls the information, uh, and and yeah, I mean, it, Twitter is a bit of a free for all sometimes, and and sometimes people are very nasty uh, and abusive, and obviously that's not okay. Uh, and in terms of things like intellectual property, we, um, so like I said in my presentation, we always tweet pictures with everything we do, but those are pictures that we would have on our website and everything on our website, we make sure is Creative Commons licensed or we have permission for it. If we're doing, uh, you know, work uh, in countries where we might be taking pictures of people, we make sure that we have their permission. So the stuff that we are sharing, I, I hope is, 
is is done properly and you know with consent and uh, and we would never share something that's copyright protected, uh, for example. Uh, we're also really uh, committed to open access. So when we are our publication library, everything is downloadable. And if our um, researchers are publishing something on an external website, we strongly encourage them to make sure that it is open access and it's not behind a paywall. Uh, so I think we, we, you know, there are ways to, to be accountable. I mean, fortunately, we are not, we don't have to engage in the, the kind of politicking that you, you mentioned. Um, you know, we're not an advocacy organization, but we do do a lot of work that lends itself to advocacy. So I, would, I think one of the things that we would do as an organization is if our researchers are working as advocates, that we would share their work and we would retweet them because obviously the, the, the work that our researchers are doing is very important. So um, I don't know if I've answered your question, but. Yeah, very much. In fact, I want to just add one more point. Uh, for example, it is so, through social media, I had the great opportunity of listening to Brent Lang when she addressed it from IAED and the global uh, policy. See that I got it from social media rather yeah. than any other means. Probably you are behind it. But what I want to uh, say in another 30 seconds is this. Uh, IAED, to me, is very close to my heart. Because uh, since 1992, I was gifted a Sustainable Development Library gift in 1992. Since then, I'm following IAED. Uh, thank you for the whole initiative. Uh, maybe an issue of uh, giving more information to community would be uh, very useful for the social media. For example, uh, infodemic management, WHO, social media has done wonderful work. You see, that sort of a observation I'm able to make. Thank you very much. I, I, I just uh, uh, slipped into this session because my session is in the afternoon. Okay. <laughs> I well, learned a lot from <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. I mean, Thank in terms much. of getting messages to the community, I mean, obviously that's something that we, we, we want to do if it's the right message for that community. Um, I think there are all other ways to do that as well. You know, we, IAD works with partners. Uh, and so people like Saqib, for example, might be better placed to get messages to the community if he's working with directly with people rather than us. So, I mean, a lot of the conversations we've had in the last few days have involved things like intermediaries. And I would say that that also holds on social media and in communications in general. So you probably we probably aren't necessarily the right person to deliver certain messages to certain communities but some of our partners might be uh so and social media might be the right way to do that but it also might not uh i mean we know that a lot of our partners use mobile phone and text messaging or the radio you know there's lots of different communications techniques that would be more appropriate in different places so thank you uh, very much that's okay uh risha yeah, hi, Annie, again. Thanks again. It was a nice presentation and quite insightful. But uh, again, I have the same question that, you know, uh, for example, if we have a research report, like we, got, we have an, uh, so ours is an NGO and we like, uh, we write a lot of research reports and all. So how do we leverage that? Because research reports are very heavy and all, and uh, I don't know how many people read it. So how do we leverage it on Twitter spe specifically? and make it like, you know, uh, you know, so that other people notice, or maybe the right people notice it. We are using the hashtags, we are using the trending topics. For example, today is a desertification, uh, World Desertification Day, yeah. the Draw Day. And we are putting up one of the research reports, maybe today or tomorrow's time. And we have a report on that. And we have like make a small copywriting, we have done a small crisp writing on the issue and what we are also doing it. But how do we leverage that? I mean, despite putting up hashtags and tagging yeah. right people and all those things yeah um i mean so re yeah research reports like you say if, it, if it's a if it's a big thing it can be challenging i mean we don't use only social media to promote mm -hmm. our reports so i'm also on a number of uh topic-based listservs so i email them with our reports on a regular basis okay. Um, I would strongly encourage IIDs to email their work directly to mm -hmm. their contacts. Okay. Uh, for us, email is still a very big channel for mm -hmm. getting our work out there. 
Uh, we also have a newsletter where we put everything. Um, coming back to Twitter though, one of the things that we do, uh, which is a fairly time intensive thing for social mm -hmm. media um, is we do sometimes do Twitter threads. Yeah. Uh, we've done a lot of these recently because we've had these big, uh, we've had quite a few big research reports coming out recently. And so for each of these, uh, what I've done is I've got uh, an advanced copy and I've gone through and picked out the kind of key messages from yeah. it and some key uh, images or graphs or charts. And on the day that we launch paper, I've done a whole thread. So Twitter has the option to, I think you asked for, uh, maybe it was Priyanka asked, can you tweet a bunch of things at the same time? Yes, yes. So you can tweet a long string of thread, tweets yeah. together yeah. at the same the time. The key message. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And so that's, uh, that's something that I've been doing for some of our reports. And those are really good then because okay. you've got your message at the start, mm -hmm. you've got your message at the beginning, you've got the kind of some of the the content of the report in in the thread. And then people can, you know, come in at any point. And if they retweet any one of those tweets, then the whole thread is getting retweeted. Um, so, so the thread is something which you're suggesting. So how do we ensure that people are also, you know, joining that conversation? Uh, well, I also, oh, that's something I haven't mentioned either. Um, if you uh, tag use lots of tags and tweets so mm -hmm. rather than putting the the mentions of the people's um yeah. uh handle directly handles, in the yeah. tweet, yeah. make sure you, yeah. you can tag 10 you can tag 10 different twitter accounts in a photo okay, okay. um and so i did a twitter thread last week that had 10 tweets in it and so it mm -hmm. had 10 pictures and yeah, i tagged yeah. 10 people in every single one of those pictures oh okay so, so it that, does, yeah. that, that, that may work for us then this time. <laughs> we'll try it, it out this trick. It does take planning though. That's the thing. So yeah. you also, you, you, it takes a bit of time to kind of see who you want to tag, to think about mm -hmm. are these right people to be looking at this. But but I do yeah. think it's worth it. Um, yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. We'll try this out this time. Maybe. Great. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Thanks so much. And were there any Bye. other uh, questions from, from anybody? Emma. Hi, Anne. Um, thanks for the interesting session. Um, you mentioned at the end there something about uh, tweet reach, um, but I don't think you spoke about it unless I missed it. I was just wondering how, I mean, I've never heard of that, but we're always looking for more tools to kind of go deep into our Twitter analytics and maybe even go further into the past, because I think it's also a bit of an issue with <laughs> Twitter analytics. So I was wondering if you could just um, speak a bit about how you use that. Thank you. Um, so we, I, to be honest, I haven't used TweetReach recently, and I think they have actually changed to being a fully paid for service, which is kind of annoying. Um, but when I've used them in the past, when it was still a free service, it, um, it was a place, it, I think it's just TweetReach.com. Uh, you put in uh, a hashtag or a Twitter handle or something, and then it looks at the last 100 tweets that were uh, done using that hashtag or um, handle or whatever. Uh, and it gives you the stats uh, from, so the last 100 tweets for that. Um, and I think that you can pay to get some more reports from it. I mean, this is the thing, I, I, I don't want to try and promote things that are paid for and uh, uh, that we haven't like, completely tested. Um, but when it was working as a free service, I, I, I used it a couple of times for like previous um, Twitter chats that we've done. Uh, and I, I did find it useful. Um, sorry if that's not a very helpful answer. No, no, that is helpful. Thanks. Because <laughs> also we just keep coming up with um, things that are paid for only. So I was quite excited that it might be free, but um, we'll check it out. Yeah, I mean, it might be worth, uh, maybe we've used it too many times now than they want us to pay. So it could be that it has a limited amount of free uh, free tries before you run out of, uh, I don't know. But yeah, apologies. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Um, were there any other questions? Um, can I be uh, really cheeky? I would really love, since this is a session about Twitter and I've been 
like live tweeting all of CBA as much as I can with my colleagues. Um, I was hoping that we could take a little screen grab of everybody and then we can tweet it out, be really meta, say, look at all the people that were in the Twitter session. Is that okay? Would people be okay to turn their cameras on so we can take a little photo? If not, I understand, but I think very slowly people are turning their cameras on. Saqib, are you gonna join us? Or you've got your own picture on there already? Maybe he's gone. Okay, uh, hang on, let me just uh, close my chat, make this full screen and then, okay. I'm going to do one, two, three, and then everyone like smile and do a thing, wave or something. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three. Great. Okay, I'll do one more just to, just to make sure we got it. Two, two different ways of doing it, using the snipping tool and the print screen option. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Great. Thank you, everybody. That was really fantastic. And um, hope you don't mind if I tweet that out from the IID account later. Um, Thank you. Uh, if there are no other questions, should we? No? Should we call it a day? Brilliant. Thank you all very much for joining me. I hope that was a useful session. Um, and enjoy the rest of your CBA. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.